Hi guys, Dr. Dillard here once again. Let's make a quick video on how to set up, make a new quiz via Brightspace, Desire to Learn. The date, by the way, this is April 2020. We're going to use the pooled question feature to set up this quiz. All right, so here we go. Step one, let's go. And what's the scenario here? I have a student who has to take the R examination. So I had to set up a new quiz for him which was cumulative. So that means I need to import questions from my midterm and my final. And But I don't need 80 questions. I just need 40 questions. I mean, there's 40 questions for the midterm, 40 for the final. How do I make a quiz that only has 40 questions? So that's kind of the uh, scenario here. So step one, let's go to quiz. Well, let's go to my course here. Make sure I got the right course. So we're still working on last quarter. So human embryology, that's winter. So let's pull that up. All right. Now let's go under assessments. Let's go to quizzes. And here we'll see. Now I already did this. I'm just kind of, now that I'm kind of smart on it, I thought I'd make a video. Because uh, in six months or so, I probably won't be so smart. And this will help me as well, hopefully help other people as well. So we have the question library is a very important place. In fact, you should build all your quizzes right here. So let's go to the question library and see what's going on there. So for embryology last winter, I created two files and I dumped my questions. I made my questions in there. So this is the final. Uh, we can I can click on that and I can show you my final here. And I don't I make new questions every quarter, so I don't care if people see these. Because I make them anew every quarter. Uh, but there they are. So I have 40 questions in there. Great. Wonderful. All right. So let's go back to the question library. Now these, uh, we didn't we didn't use this quarantine or this uh, lockdown or shelter in place didn't start. So I, I had to actually make his midterm questions. So I just made those in a folder called embryology. I guess I probably should have. Uh, called it. Well, heck, you know what? I bet I can edit that. Let's edit it right now because this consists of midterm questions. So let's just call these midterm questions. So these are questions from my midterm examination. I had to make them up though. All right. So there we go. Now these, these are the midterm questions. Well, we didn't. We did paper tests for midterm, so I had to make these this morning. Uh, and you can make them really simple. Uh, once you're in here, just go hit new. Uh, let's make a multiple choice question. And there you go. Make your question. Click save or click save and new, and you can keep writing questions. You should always write your questions in this this pool because you can you can pull them out and make other tests with them. But let's not do that because I don't want to make a question right now. OK, so that's what we have in our question library. Just wanted to show you that. Now let's go make a test. OK, so that's where we're going from. But now we need to go back. So let's go to quizzes. And let's make a new quiz. And we'll call this just the YouTube quiz, just for fun. All right, let's set it up. We don't no categories we have to worry about. Well, there's no questions in here. Uh, let's just go down here. I mean, we've I think I've done this before. You could put a description in here if you want. Or this is actually the introduction. Introduction. Uh, this is intro two. I guess that comes out to be this will be the description just so we can see where this stuff ends up at. And then this is the head, footer, or turn it on. Definitely disable right clicking, disable instant messaging. I could get an email, put my email in there if I want to know when he completes the test, but that's fine. Okay, but that's the problem is the quiz is empty. So we have to create the quiz. So this is the key part right here. So click Edit, Add Edit Questions. Now here's the key. You don't ever want to import anything. I don't even know how that stuff works. 
Um, but this is where you want to go. You want to add, and it'll give you an option. You could actually build your test right in here by going to a new question. You could build it just like that. Or if you've already made questions like I have, go to the question pool. That's the place that we were just at. So question pool. So we can name it. Not It's a star here, so I assume you have to put something in here because we have two folders to pick from. So I'll just say midterm questions. We'll pick those out first. I'll just say midterm. Now here's the key. So if I want my test to be 40 questions in total, I want 20 coming from the midterm, 20 from the final. So I'll just pick 20. All right. Uh, and now we got to go find the question. So browse question library. It's going to take us back to the library where we are the pool of questions that we made. Don't want final yet. We want the midterm. Great. Check that. Great. Go down here. Add. All right, great. There's the questions. All right, maybe I'll block those out. I don't know. He hasn't taken the test yet. I doubt if he watches these YouTube videos, but you never know. Uh, but there's the questions. And great. So we can save those. And great. So there's the midterm part of the questions, but we're not done. We're still building the test. So let's go add some more questions. Do exactly the same thing. Add. We're going to get them from the question pool. And these are going to be coming from the final. And it doesn't have to match that file name exactly. I want another 20 questions because there's 40 questions here. Let's go browse the library. Awesome. Here's my choices. Now don't pick midterm. We just we just populated the test with these midterm questions. Let's go right here. We've, we're working on final. Okay, awesome. So we got 40 questions selected. But watch when I click add. Don't don't panic yet. And now we have another chance to change this. Uh, it's not going to add all 40. It's going to add 20, and it's going to pick these at will. Uh, you don't have any power to pick these questions. It'll randomly pick these questions. So great. Save it. And there we go. Our test is done. And it's made up of these. And uh, awesome. So we are done populating our test. And that's all we have to do. So let's go back to the settings. And just to show you, so this is our YouTube quiz. We're still in that. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's 40 questions. It even's got a little breakdown here. The student won't see that. I mean, you could probably stop watching this video at this point if you want. Uh, but I will go a step further. I will go to my student view and we'll, we'll take it. We'll take the test just to show you what it looks like. Uh, let's try this because I tried this before and it didn't work. But I wanted to do seven questions per page students are crushing these tests right my grades are like a grade and a half higher than they were before so we need to make it a little harder for the students because it's going to be open note right you can't stop them from using their notes so I think if I make it seven questions per page and then tick this paging button they won't be able to go backwards uh, which um, I don't know. It just will probably make it harder. Uh, we can also shuffle the questions is important because we want to mix all the midterm and final questions into one big batch. It'll do that even though they're separated right here. Uh, that won't be so. Uh, we already did our descriptions. Awesome. Let's go to restrictions now. We I have a video on restrictions so I won't repeat myself. I have to unhide it from users because I'm going to go take it as a student here in a second. Uh, we want to display it. Uh, start availability. Let's start it now. All right. Uh, let's not give it an end date. Display it in the calendar. I don't think that will hurt anything. That means it's just open forever, I think. Um, password, we don't need to do that. We don't. I already covered all this stuff. But let's add a special user. Let's. I have to add myself. So add a special user. Oh gosh, now I have to. I'll probably block this section out because it's really tough. Oh look, I for my last, I'm already in there. Uh, so you, I don't mind you seeing my name. Yeah, so I don't have to block anything out. You can see my all that stuff. I don't care. 
Um, so tick my box. All right, I'm going to make my ad as a special user now because before you you have to click this because because uh, there's no or I guess I already am a special ad special user. No, I have to add my special user first. Click that button. So I'm added. Okay, great. Uh, now edit the quiz. Am I down here? I think I messed that up. No, nope, there I am, special user. Uh, that was good enough. Uh, I can begin it immediately. I'll take it. It's already, what time is it? Yep. Okay, awesome. So let's go take the quiz. All right, so now let's get out of here. Go back to embryology. And now let's go see what our quiz that we built looks like. So you guys know how to do this to switch to the switch to the student view. So up here there's my name. View as a student. And before we go, in case I forget, it's a pain trying to get back to the professor tab. So to get back out of the student view, it doesn't show you. How do I do it? Nothing shows. You actually just click the X button, right? Took me forever to figure that out. Now I'm back to my other view. All right, but that's not our purpose. Let's go view as a student and let's go take the test. It should be available. So now I'm a student Doug here. Go to assessment, go to quiz. And where's my YouTube quiz? There's the real one. There it is. Okay, awesome. Let's go to that. Um, also, because I'm in student view, I could either start it like this, or if I go back, the student, if he just enters his page and looks at his calendar, here's the calendar. You can see some events. Uh, and there is one that is, I don't even, can't remember the date. What is the date? It's the fifth today. Uh, so if I go on that, Let's see, does it have it in here? Click on five. Oh, there it is right there, duh. All right, it's right there sticking out, right? Of course, I couldn't see it. Okay, so I could start the quiz there. That's another way to start it. But let's just go back and start it this way because this is how I tell the students. Go to assessments, go to quizzes, find your quiz click on it left click on it there's the YouTube quiz and there's the description that's I just wrote described there it's gonna you can say okay this is a 40 question test you can't go backwards there's seven questions per page whatever you want to say it's availability is now hey let's start the quiz there's some more instructions uh, intro number two I still haven't got that all sorted out for sure but let's start the quiz and see what the student sees all right, yeah, there's the questions. Uh, ladder plate, mesoderm, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, I mean, I'll just hit a couple of these just so I can get out of it. So do a two, couple of those. And see, this is where the only thing, it, it doesn't make pages. So I don't know what the problem is. That seems like there's a bug in the system. Or maybe the real student, when they take it, they'll be locked into that. So I'm not sure what that is. But um, that function doesn't seem to work, at least in the student view. So once the student is done, they hit submit. Remember, if they submit the quiz, uh, they can't go back into it, even if there's still time left. Uh, this will submit your quiz. Are you sure you want to? Yes. Are you sure? It gives them another chance. Are you sure? You, that's like the third time you've submitted it. All right. The quiz is submitted. Awesome. We're all done. Great. So I hope that helps. And hopefully you know how to use your pool questions to make a quiz to the desired size. All right, see you in the next video.